Hello there, my name's Jack. The snack that smiles back. Welcome to J Mick. Today's video was all about relationship advice. As a young adult who's dated things, I have some experience and I'd like to share it. Now remember, if you enjoyed today's content or have a blast, like the video so you can help out the channel. But let's not dilly-dally any longer. It's time to sit back, relax, grab your favorite cup of tea and your best Spotify background music playlist and let's get started with the stories. My 26 female boyfriend, 29 male, has only started developing emotional abuse tendencies and patterns. His anger is triggered when I get nervous or fearful around him. Is it common for abusers to act angry when you act afraid or intimidated? I made a very lengthy prior post about the abusive emotional tendencies that my boyfriend has just recently developed after a period of lovely, sweet, romantic honeymooning in the beginning where he treated me like a princess. I am just starting to recognize the cycles and patterns of emotional abuse. I have noticed that the more time goes on, the more I act nervous around him. Like I'm walking on eggshells, carefully regulating my emotions, not being too sad or upset or angry, nervous to talk about certain topics or bring things up in fear that it will trigger another anger or rage tantrum where he flips a switch from being nice and sweet to berating, yelling, fighting with me. It wasn't like this in the beginning. Things were normal between us and I wasn't afraid to be myself. That's what I loved about being with him. But now when he notices that I am hesitant, fearful, scared, or intimidated by him, I've noticed that this seems to be a trigger for him as well. He sees anxiety or fear in my eyes around him and this triggers rage too. I am trying to figure out if this is a typical normal trigger for someone who is emotionally manipulative or abusive. I'm trying to understand why. It almost feels to me like I am a mirror reflecting back at him. He sees the fear in my eyes, which reflects back to him the way he is treating me, and he doesn't want to confront that. So his response to a reality he wants to avoid is anger. He says things to me like, Stop acting pathetic! Or, Come on, stop acting so scared to talk to me! Or, Come on, just say what you mean, stop tiptoeing! And, You're acting as if I'm some monster! He doesn't like seeing me act this way, but I act this way because I have learned to. When I acted normal and real, this would trigger fights and yelling. I am curious if anyone else has experienced this. Thank you. Look, this straight up just sounds like a dangerous situation, regardless of how little the uh, physical abuse is coming across, or even if there isn't any in the first place. You haven't mentioned any physical abuse, so at least that's a positive. Now, one thing I want to point out about this story is that we are hearing this purely from her side of things, her perception of things. Does that mean, though, that she's most likely overreacting, yada yada yada? No. I've read enough of these to know and tell when someone is clearly just overreacting about stuff and getting a bit too crazy overthinking some people's intentions and actions. And this is clearly a situation where you are really not in a safe space right now. I understand you kind of want to help your partner before he gets any worse, and look, that's a good thing to have, that intention to care and love your partner that you want to improve them or fix anything that you feel is damaging to both you and, more importantly, them as well, that's a good thing to have. Don't feel bad or ashamed or think that's a negative thing to have, that you care about them. And look, men commonly aren't really capable of being that self-aware much. Well. <laughs> No, that's a bit of an assumption to make. Guys are just as capable. It's just unfortunately, there are people out there, men and women, who just don't bother to. And unfortunately, I think that your partner is one of those people. But I'm gonna hope that he seems to be in a place right now where there is a possibility to sort him out. You made a great observation earlier where you mentioned that it almost feels like he is seeing a mirror reflecting back at him and he sees the fear in your eyes which makes him think he's treating you badly and that frustrates him because he doesn't want to come across that way but you are perceiving it that way and so yeah, it makes him get defensive and angry as a result. Also, by the words he says to you, or at least what you're quoting, it definitely sounds like he's getting frustrated at just how you're reacting to him in his heightened state of emotion. Now, I'm not exactly an expert on relationship abuse. While I'm perceiving this as someone who doesn't seem like he'd exactly resort to physical violence just because you're looking at him a bit concerned, I don't want to rely on that. 
I think anyone is capable of anything under the right circumstances, both good and bad. And so I'd have to rely on you to perceive whether or not you feel like he is genuinely going to hurt you. And regardless if you think so or not, seek out some professional advice about it. As easy and comforting it is to listen to strangers on the internet reply to your post about it, you need to see someone professional about this kind of stuff. I don't feel like there's anything else to say here except just to be careful, so I think it's best we move to the comments now and see what everyone else has to suggest. Sounds like gaslighting, which is also typical for abusive relationships. Also, other stuff you mention is a part of a cycle of abuse. Emotional abuse escalates into physical. You need to leave before it's too late. You're not the problem, even though he makes you feel like that. Abusers twist your reality and make you believe you're the cause of all their problems. It's not normal to feel afraid of your partner. They should never give you a reason to feel like that. OP responded to this with, He is going through a very hard, depressive time due to his health. I am in the beginning of recognizing all this, and I'm hoping to turn it around before it goes too far. Thanks for your thoughts. He won't turn physical towards me. He never has. But yes, sometimes I am intimidated, but this fact seems to irritate and anger him. Yep, this response alone is already a red flag for me in terms of how she's perceiving his escalating behavior. And though yes, we should acknowledge the reality that not every guy who raises their voice or gets emotionally upset wants to hurt you, but it's still something we've got to be careful about. It doesn't matter if he's depressed or whatever, there's no excuse for emotional abuse. I understand you think it won't turn into physical abuse, but that's what probably all victims of spousal abuse have thought. Nobody is straight up physically abusive from the beginning. Abusers pretend they're sweet and lovely, and when you're trapped, the cycle begins. Don't wait for him to get fixed, nor think it's all your fault. Abusers don't change. It all just escalates. I'm going to wildly jump to conclusions here. I hope I'm way off. You are putting way more effort into figuring out his problems than he would ever do for you. He was probably attracted to your calm and caring nature because those traits are of people the least likely to challenge him. I bet he has very low self-esteem and his insecurities are what make him unable to deal with your discomfort. When he senses your anxiety, he takes that as a judgment of failure on his part. Instead of working on conflict as a partner, he makes it all about him and why he doesn't have to carry any guilt or blame. Being free of guilt or blame is more important to someone like this than your feelings. Think about that. Years of this can destroy everything from your sense of humor to your self-worth. Our next story is more about platonic friendships and just people in general rather than a specific couple. Toxic people talk bad about people they're friends with to make them look bad. I do the opposite. People say narcs and toxic people will talk bad about their friends to others, so that if they want to drop the friend, they can easily and they already have started talking bad about the person so everyone believes the person is bad. But I do the opposite. When someone is mean or a bad person, I forgive pretty much everything and I don't tell anyone about the mean things they do. I make these bad people seem great when they're being rude to me. Then, if the person is awful awful, I start to really dislike them. And everyone is confused because they never knew this person was treating me so wrong. I also, out of nowhere, am really upset at someone and since I've been convincing myself they are a good person for so long, I don't understand the sudden anger I have for them and I, I think it's my fault. It's not like being passive aggressive, it's like not minding toxic behavior until it's so awful that I'm so mad. Why do I do this? And how can I stop? I want to notice this behavior and talk to them about it or cut them off instead of accepting it. Because then I seem like the bad guy because I'm randomly so angry at someone and I often don't explain everything they did wrong. Well, first thing to point out is that if you don't mind toxic or annoying or disagreeable behavior until you do, then you've always disliked that behavior in the first place. It's just only until then that you're finally going to be open and honest about it. Look, everyone's going to do something now and again that you're going to find wrong. And they're going to treat you in a way that you don't appreciate. 
But one thing you need to be aware of is whether or not they're doing it intentionally because they just lack any respect for you, or if they're just completely unaware how they're coming across. I wonder if maybe that's where you're subconsciously coming from. You're afraid of actually assuming wrong about these people, or what they've said, or how they've said it, and how they've treated you as a result. And that could possibly be where your hesitancy is coming from. Perhaps you are aware that what they've done or said isn't actually that big of a deal, but of course, they keep doing it because, of course, you haven't confronted them about it yet. And then you eventually snap at them and they all think that you're being completely out of hand because where did this come from? And then you further retreat into ever wanting to confront people about these things because you're afraid you are completely wrong and you don't want to embarrass yourself. And hey, I'm rather the same person myself. I definitely, habitually, try to just look past people's uh, behavior for things. I always try to look into why they did this or are doing that and try to understand if there's a good behind it, or at least a good intention. Maybe the reason that stranger pushed right past you isn't because they don't care that you are in front of them and that there was no reason to have to bang you out of the way just to get through, but maybe they're about to throw up and need a race to the bathroom, or they need a race to the bus. Or perhaps they've come across someone in public that they are desperately trying to avoid, and they've bumped you, they've realized that, but they are too much in a hurry and in a panic and ashamed to actually confront you and apologize. Of course, that is a very petty example, but I hope you kind of get what I'm saying. In regards to your own self-development though, I would encourage you to try and be a bit more confrontational, but of course, to avoid you feeling like you're coming across as getting too worked up over things, allow yourself to just talk about it more casually. Again, that's a rather simple thing to say, a harder thing to actually do, but try to consistently get yourself into that mindset where if someone does or says something that you don't like or find rude, don't be afraid to just say, hey, wait, could you repeat that or say that again? It, it just, it sounded like you were kind of being rather offensive towards me. And straight away, be ready to apologize for making them feel a bit awkward at having to explain it again and then prove that they actually weren't being rude to you at all, yada yada yada. Because again, I think what's really troubling you here is just the fear that your perceptions on someone has been wrong and that you've just come across as a toxic person yourself. And let's face it, everyone out here assumes, so just accept it. Some people are gonna assume wrong of you, just like you can sometimes assume wrong of others. But Tracy here, I hope I pronounced the name right, uh, has a really good explanation as to where this person might be coming from. Toxic behaviours are much more major than just talking smack about people behind their backs. Note that your fear of being identified as toxic means you now go the complete opposite way. You have basically become an enabler of these toxic people. And I get it. If you raise concerns, then things have to change. It might lead to confrontation. You worry the toxic people will accuse you of being toxic or a narc. You worry about change. So instead, you dedicate your energy to maintaining a false status quo, to idealizing them and letting things go on without wanting to cause too much of a fuss. You say it is like not minding, but the fact you go to bat for them suggests to me that this is closer to outright denial. Realistically, you need to challenge your definition of toxic, including acknowledging when someone upsets you. You also have to be real that you are contributing to their toxic nature, albeit likely unwittingly, when you defend and downplay the negative things they do. That isn't to say anything that they do is your fault, but you don't want to risk giving them longer to do damage when they might otherwise by distracting everyone. More than anything though, this is about letting yourself be upset. Letting yourself not want to be around abusers without the need of getting too burnt out before you do so. Now the OP did respond. I don't think the reason I allow it is because I don't want to be identified as toxic, but I think it's because my mum was an emotionally abusive narc, so this behaviour feels more comfortable for me than others. I also think a large part of it is that I have social anxiety, so I don't want to not have the people I'm close to because I'm super shy and nervous around my friends I don't know as well. Now this last bit doesn't make much sense, maybe because of the grammar, but I think what they're saying is that their mother is what influenced them to avoid being someone who spills the beans on when someone's been a bad person. I wish they went into more detail about exactly what they meant by this as that could have further detailed exactly what steps this person needs to take to better resolve it. 
at the moment, it's still hard to tell exactly what they're looking for in terms of understanding themselves and how to better approach people, specifically when it comes to confronting them. But this is a fresh post. Maybe they'll post an update one day. Hey, you! So it looks like you've made it to the end of today's video. So, if you're looking at my face, that means you liked the video, so why not prove it and let us all know by liking the video. It really helps the channel out, and I'd really like to one day be making quality content over quantity content, so if you'd like to help me out on that, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can always be updated on the latest of our videos. I have a lot of fun sharing these stories with you, letting you know my opinions on them, and reading yours as well. I do read the comments. I don't always comment, but I read the comments. So if you have any feedback, or if there's anything you'd like to talk about, be sure to do so down below. But with that also said, it's the end of the video, which means you're done with me now, so... I'm heartbroken, but I will never forget you. I'll see you next time. Bye!